In my last video, I had a look at a $1,400 AliExpress gaming PC, which aside from looking like it was involved in a coup at some point during its shipping, it was surprisingly good. And it came with this chode beast of a 3060, which after an hour long gaming session in a case without particularly good airflow, it barely broke 56 degrees Celsius. And I think that means today, we're gonna have to overclock the snot out of it. Now before we go to town overclocking this Asus RTX 3060 Tough Gaming, I think we should have a closer look at the cooler because it is real sexy. It's got a huge fin stack with five pretty chunky heat pipes spreading heat around the cooler. There is a lot of space all over the shroud so that you can have a lot of air moving through the cooler. It has three fans that have huge amounts of marketing around how they're more penetrative than fans with less marketing around them. And the actual shroud is metal, which I haven't seen in a while. Uh, so is the backplate. And another thing that I like about this cooler is that it's going to be really easy to remove in order to clean and repaste and whatever. As you can see, you've only got eight screws to deal with to remove the entire cooler, which for something this size is, is pretty good. So let, let's open it up and have a look what's going on with the PCB. And there goes our warranty. No, I think it's just the thermal pads and stuff that's holding on for dear life. There we go. Remove these clips for the fans and I'm guessing the RGB. Actually, before we have a closer look at this, let's have a closer look at the cooler's undercarriage. Nice. Now, moving over to the PCB, we see that RTX 3060 die with quite a thin film of thermal paste on it. However, all the memory modules are very completely covered with thermal pads. And off to the left of the GPU, we have six phases here. There's actually one missing, so that makes me think that they use the same PCB for like the 3060 Ti version of the card, probably. Then they can just kind of add a phase in there. And then I think under this plate, we have a couple more power phases. So let me remove that and, and have a closer look. I actually don't want to remove that thermal pad and break it. It feels like it's going to break. So yes, under there we have an additional two phases. And that is actually quite a substantial power delivery for a GPU like this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a beautiful PCB. So with that, let's reassemble it and then start with our tests. Now that we have our graphics card in our test system with its 11900K and 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, let's get a baseline reading of temperatures and frame rate. As you can see, we're still sitting under 60 degrees Celsius with a boost frequency of 1935 megahertz. It's been sitting like that pretty much the entire time we've been gaming, uh, and that is a very solid baseline. Uh, so let's do the actual benchmark run so that we can get that performance figure and see how much more performance we can squeeze out of this chode beast. Now we're going to start our overclock by seeing what the max core frequency is that we can get. Oh damn, okay, so we're up to 2122 megahertz about there with a plus 190 on uh, MSI Afterburner. And it's running! Uh, we've barely gained any additional temperature, if anything really. Okay, let's see if we can push the core a little bit further than that. Uh, let's take this up to 200. Oh, hell yeah, 2137 megahertz on the core now, which is, that's pretty high. Still under 60 degrees Celsius as well. The coolers barely notice that anything's changed. This thing is so overkill. Um, but yeah, okay, let's see if we can take it a bit further. 210? Ooh, 2145 megahertz. There hasn't even been a mild hiccup yet. It's just trucking along. Oh, I was hoping I could get that guy there. Okay, let's try Let's try another step up. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Okay, we're at 2152 now. It did briefly hit 2160, and there didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, but this is... 
This is going well. I, I think we're gonna be able to get a reasonable performance jump out of this card. Damn, I think we may have potentially won the Silicon Lottery with this 3060, and we're still not over 60C. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. The next one's gonna make it crash. It has to, right? Like, this is... This is already getting ridiculous. 260? Okay. I really want to get it over 2200. I really, really want to get it over 2200. 2212! And it hasn't crashed! <laughs> what? Oh, no! Oh, no! 2212's too much for it. Okay. The game's crashed there, but I'm gonna try and drop it a little bit and see if we can get it stable above 2200 megahertz. One hour later. Now, unfortunately, we got a bit jabated there in terms of max core overclock expectation. In reality, uh, the benchmark was only stable at around 2160-ish megahertz, which is still a very big overclock, but, you know, not as big as we were expecting. Anyway, with this, it led to a little bit of a performance increase, but we still have to overclock our memory and see what that does. Now, when it comes to memory overclock, I'm gonna be really brave and start with plus 1,000 megahertz. Now, I watched a Jay's Two Cents video on him overclocking it to 3060, and he got even higher than that. So, yeah, let's see if that works. Oh, yes, plus 1,000 seems to have worked no problem. Uh, now, we do need to have some jabating range kind of worked into our overclocking expectation here. But let's try 1,100. Um, it seems to be fine. Ah, damn. Okay, let's try even higher. Let's see. 200. So we're sitting at 2160-ish on the core, which is over 200 megahertz higher. And we're sitting at 8,700 on the memory. Do we try? Do we try a bit higher? Yeah, yeah, I think why not? That is v a very aggressive overclock. Okay, let's try a little bit higher, but it's already starting to feel a bit unstable. So I'm actually going to keep track of that because I think 1,200 is going to be the way to go. I think we're definitely in jabating range now. Yeah, no, there we go. There it's crashed. So, plus 1,350 was just too much for it. Uh, let's try here, and then see if we can finish a benchmark run. Now, after finding our max stable core and memory overclock, I did go back and try and push the core and memory frequencies a little bit independently, but I couldn't get anything higher stable, unfortunately. I don't really know what happened with that initial core frequency test, where we got like 2200 megahertz on the core, but apparently we spooked the little graphics card and it never replicated that again, unfortunately. But when all was said and done, with our max core and memory overclock, we got this frame rate, which is up from 98 frames per second. And this means that after four hours spent overclocking, we got about a 9% performance increase, which isn't a whole lot. To be honest, you probably wouldn't notice that in a blind test, which is unfortunate, but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy pushing this graphics card to the limit. Uh, it's always fun to see what you can get out of it. But truth be told, the answer is usually about nine. Um, yeah, but anyway, that brings me to the end of the video. Now, do subscribe to the channel because on Saturday, we have a video coming where I compare the AliExpress system where this graphics card's from to a local Canadian pre-built with pretty much the exact same specs. I think it's going to be a really good video. I've already bought the system and everything. So yeah, subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And until that video, bye-bye. Ich hab ne Granate für Sie.